Welcome back. More now of our 360 exclusive interview with juror B-37 in the George Zimmerman trial. She's the first juror to speak publicly about what went on into the, uh, in the juror room and what made up uh, her mind uh, that George Zimmerman was not guilty. You've already heard her take on prosecution witness Rachel Gentel. We pick up the conversation talking about her impression of the defendant. What did you think of George Zimmerman? I think George Zimmerman is a man whose heart was in the right place, but just got displaced by the, the vandalism in the neighborhoods and wanting to catch these people so badly that he went above and beyond what he really should have done. But I think his heart was in the right place. It just went terribly wrong. Do you think he's guilty of something? I think he's guilty of not using good judgment. When he was in the car and he had called 911, he shouldn't have gotten out of that car. But the 911 operator also, when he was talking to him, kind of egged him on. I don't know if it's their policy to tell them what to do not to get out of the car, to stay in their car. But I think he should have said, stay in your car, not can you see where he's gone? Do you feel George Emmerich should have been carrying a gun? I think he has every right to carry a gun. I think it's everybody's right to carry a gun, as long as they use it the way it's supposed to be used and be responsible in using it. George Emmerich obviously did not testify, but his testimony essentially was, was brought into the trial through those videotapes, uh, a number of videotapes, so that he, re he walked police through a reenactment of mm -hmm. what he said happened. Mm -hmm. How important were those videotapes to you? I don't really know because, I mean, watching the tapes, you can, there's always something in the back saying, is it, is it right? Is it consistent? But with all the, the evidence of the phone calls and all the witnesses that he saw, I think George was pretty consistent in what, and t told the truth, basically. I'm sure there were some fabrications, enhancements, but I think pretty much it happened the way George said it happened. When, when George Zimmerman said that Trayvon Martin reached for his gun, mm -hmm. though there was no DNA evidence, mm -hmm. um, and the defense said, well, had testimony in, well, it could have got washed off in the rain or, or the like, do you believe that Trayvon Martin reached for George Zimmerman's gun? I think he might have. I think George probably thought that he did because George was the one who knew that George was carrying a gun. And he was aware of that. You can't say for, for, for sure whether or not Trayvon Martin knew that George Zimmerman was carrying a gun? No. So you can't say for sure whether or not Trayvon Martin reached for that gun? Right. But that doesn't make it right. I mean, it doesn't make, there's not a right or a wrong. Even if he did reach for the gun, it doesn't make any difference. How so? Well, because George had a right to protect himself at that point. So you believe that George Zimmerman really felt his life was in danger? I do. I really do. Do you think Trayvon Martin threw the first punch? I think he did. What makes you think that? Um, because of the evidence of on, on the tee, or on the sidewalk, where um, George says he was punched. There was evidence of his flashlight and keys there. And then a little bit farther down, there was a flashlight that he was carrying. And I think that's where Trayvon hit him. So you think, based on the testimony you heard, you believe that Trayvon Martin was the aggressor? I think the roles changed. I think, I think George got in a little bit too deep, which he shouldn't have been there. But Trayvon decided that he wasn't going to let him scare him and get the one over up on him or something. Um, and I think Tra Trayvon got mad and attacked him. Do you feel like you know for sure what happened in, in the, the altercation? And did the other jurors feel for sure that they knew what happened? Nobody knew exactly what happened. I mean, it started at one point and ended at another point. Witnesses said they heard um, left to right move movement. Other witnesses said they heard right to left movement. But the credible witnesses said they heard left to right movement. So whatever happened, I think the punch came and then they ended up in front of the, in the back of the house. Um, I don't think anybody knows. 
when the defense in their closing argument played that um, animation of, of what they believe happened, mm -hmm. did you find that credible? I found it credible. I did. What did you think of the testimony of Trayvon Martin's mother and, and father? Did you find them credible? I think they, they, they said anything a mother and father would say, just like George Zimmerman's mom and father. I think they're your kids. You want to believe that they're innocent and that was their voice because hearing that voice would make it credible but that they were the victim, not the aggressor. So in a way, both sets of parents kind of canceled each other out in your mind? They did, definitely. Because if I was a mother, I would want to believe so hard that it was not my son that did that or was responsible for any of that, that I would convince myself probably that it was his voice. How critical though was it for you in your mind to have an idea of whose voice it was yelling for help? I mean, how important was that yell for help? I think it was pretty important because it was a long cry and scream for help that whoever was calling for help was in fear of their life. The prosecution didn't use the word racial profiling during the case. Mm -hmm. They used the word profiling. Mm -hmm. And that was something that was worked out between the judge and the lawyers when the jury wasn't in the room. Right. Do you feel that George Zimmerman racially profiled Trayvon Martin? Do you think race played a role in his decision, his view of, of Trayvon Martin as suspicious? I don't think he did. I think just circumstances caused George to think that he might be a robber or, or trying to do something bad in the neighborhood because of all that had gone on previously. There were, there were um, unbelievable a number of robberies in the neighborhood. So you don't believe race played a role in this case? I don't think it, it did. I think if, if, if there was another person, Spanish, white, Asian, if they came in the same situation they where Trayvon was, I think George would have reacted the exact same way. Why do you think George Emmerman found Trayvon Martin suspicious then? Because he was cutting through the back. It was raining. Um, he said he was looking in houses as he was walking down the road, um, kind of just not having a purpose to where he was going. He was stopping and starting. But, you, I mean, that's George's rendition of it. Um, but I think the situation where Trayvon got into, um, him being late at night, dark at night, raining, and anybody would think anybody walking down the road, stopping and turning and looking, if that's exactly what happened, um, is suspicious. And George had said that he didn't recognize who he was. Well, was that a common belief on the jury that race was not, that race did not play a role in this? I think all of us thought race did not play a role. So nobody felt race played a role? I don't think so. None of the jurors? I can't speak for them. You, I'm not That wasn't voice. part of the discussion in the no, jury room? No, we never had that discussion. It didn't come up what, that the question of did George Zimmerman profile Trayvon Martin because he was African American? No, I, I think he just profiled him because he was the neighborhood watch and he profiled anybody that came in acting strange. Mm. I think it was just circumstances happened that he saw Trayvon at the exact time that he thought he was suspicious. The prosecution tried to paint George Zimmerman as a wannabe cop, mm -hmm. overeager. Mm -hmm. Did you buy that? I think he's overeager to help people. Like the lady who got broken in and robbed while her baby and her were upstairs. Um, he came over and he offered her a lock for her back sliding black glass door. He offered her his phone number, his wife's phone number. He, want, he told her that she, that she could come over if she felt stressed or she needed anybody. Um, come over to their house, sit down, have dinner. Not anybody, I mean you have to have a heart to do that and care to help people. So you didn't find it creepy that, you didn't find it a negative, that you didn't buy the prosecution when they kind of said he was a wannabe cop? No, I didn't at all. Is George Zimmerman somebody you would like to have on a neighborhood watch in your community? If he didn't go too far. I mean, you can always go too far. He just didn't stop at the limitations that he should have stopped at. So, I don't is that a yes or 
that you, you if he didn't go too far is he somebody prone you think to going too far I mean, I, is he somebody I, I you would feel comfortable? Frustrated. I think he was frustrated with the whole situation in the neighborhood with the break-ins and the robberies and they actually arrested somebody not that long ago. Um, I, 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 I mean, I would feel comfortable having George, but I think he's learned a, a good lesson. So you would feel comfortable having him now because you think he's learned a lesson from mm -hmm. all of this? Exactly. I think he just didn't know when to stop. He was frustrated, and things just got out of hand. People have now remarked subsequently that he gets his gun back, and there are some people who have said the idea that he gets a, is, can have a gun worries them. Does that worry you? That doesn't worry me. I think he'd be more responsible than anybody else on this planet right now. Oh, well, that's the juror. She's speaking exclusively for the first time. The first juror to speak out publicly. Coming up, more of my interview. Our first look inside the jury room. What happened? Juror B37 saying that when they first went in to deliberate, half the jurors thought that Zimmerman was not guilty. The other three voted for second-degree murder or manslaughter. She tells me how their minds were changed. That's next.